Well, how's everybody this morning? Amen. Glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good to have you here this morning. Hopefully you that are watching through that camera, we're going to get you here in a little while. Amen. Amen. But if not, you'll get to see it on replay. We'll have it on the Facebook page. If you will, turn to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're just going to talk a little bit this morning about spending time with the Lord. Amen? Amen. I can see from my experiences here lately of the more time I spend, the more time I want to spend. And the more He shows up. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. Lord, I thank you right now for your word. It never quits. It never fails. It never gives up, Lord, and I thank you right now. Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, for being so patient, Lord, so long-suffering with us. Lord, I just thank you for it right now. And Lord, I thank you for allowing me this morning to be your mouthpiece. And Lord, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. I tell you, be a good thing for everybody. Every time you walk out the, out the door to go in public, pray that the Lord be your mouthpiece. Amen. Did, did, he, did he speak through you? Amen. You don't have to have a preacher for the, for the word, for the Lord to give you something for somebody. Amen. Right. All you have to do is be willing to give it out. Amen. Right. Let's just start with verse number 1. John chapter 15. He said, I am the true vine, and my husband, is, my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He said, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of, uh, cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Amen. <clears throat> he's likening us to <clears throat> excuse me, he's likening us to a plant. Amen? Tomato plant. You know you Tomato plant starts growing and you get a tomato on it. And it gets about that big around. And as long as you, put, as long as you leave it there, it should continue to grow, shouldn't it? Because it's drawing nutrients from the vine. Amen? Yep. But if you ever notice, once you pick it, it don't get no bigger. Right. Amen? Once you take it away from its supply, once you take it away from the vine, that's it. It don't get any bigger. Amen? It may get red. It may get rotten. It, a lot of things may happen to it, but it don't get any bigger. Amen? That's the same way we are with this Word. As long as we hooked up to this Word, as long as we involved with the Lord, as long as we got a direct link to Him, we continue to grow. Amen? We continue to move forward. But what happens immediately, immediately when we get separated from that? What happens? We quit growing in the Word, don't we? We start growing in the world then. Amen? Other things start becoming important. Other things start becoming more prevalent. Because, see, they're in our face right now. Amen? We all talk about that we got too much going on. Everybody's too busy, and this is the truth. Everybody's got too much to do. Amen? The sad part is that stuff's got to be done, ain't it? Amen? But there's more than one way to do it. Right? We can just put the Lord off and say, well, well, we'll get back to you later, Lord, and we just go take care of all the world and stuff. You know what happens when you do that? You, you usually don't get back to it. Amen? You usually get tied up, wrapped up, and tangled up in worldly affairs, worldly stuff, and the next thing you know, you're in a mess that you can't get out of. And you look around and say, Lord, where you at? And he said, Son, I hadn't left. I'm right where you left me. Amen? So we can handle it that way, which is the way most Christians do. Right? Yep. Or the Lord said we can handle it this way. We can go after Him. We can seek His face. We can go after His Word. And we can pray that, that He show us a way to start lightening our load. Start getting this stuff out of the way. Right. Amen? 
Not just focus on the stuff. Right? Don't get me wrong. I'm, I like stuff. I'm not against stuff. Amen? And I was actually standing at my side door yesterday at my house when that storm come up and seen a big old sweet gum tree fall right across the top of my building and hit my truck. Tore my building all to pieces, dented my truck up. But it's stuff. But you know what? For a second, it hurt my heart. Amen? It wasn't just stuff. That's my stuff. Amen? That's the Lord's stuff. Right? But the more I thought about it, the more I realized it's just stuff. Amen? It's just stuff. So I'm not going to get consumed. I'm not going to get tied up, wrapped up, and tangled up in that. Amen? Amen? I've already said what's going to happen according to His Word, and that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's right. The Lord told me, you know, when we talk to the insurance company, don't ask them what they're going to do. Tell them what we want them to do. That's right. Amen? Don't give me what you think you can do. I want, I want you to do this. is what I want you to do. Amen? Right. Amen? That's, right. that's the difference between hearing the Word, walking in the Word, and just doing what everybody else does. Amen? That's why it's so important that we stay in this Word every day that we're moving forward. And I know we can't be in this Word every minute of every day. But how many people... You may not know all of these Scriptures, and you may not know where they're found. But how many people you can quote Scripture? How many? All of us know some, don't we? Amen? Well, why, when we're tied up in the world and we're having to do worldly things, we can't, we can't just quote those Scriptures? We can't walk around talking to the Lord. Amen? I mean, we, you know, we out grocery shopping. And, I mean, I don't have my Bible with me, but you know what? My, my back will start hurting. I'll get a pain. I don't just walk around and say, you know what? I gotta, man, I got to be glad when I get home and get in prayer. No. I start talking to it right there. Amen? He himself took my infirmities. He bore my sickness. And by his stripes, I were healed. Right. Amen? I don't care who's listening to you. Amen? I don't care who, care who hears me praise God. I want people to hear me praise God. Amen. Right? That's right. Amen? But it's, it, it's all about how we get hooked up in this Word and how important it is to us. The more important something is to you, the more you can be hooked up to it and it's harder to turn loose of. Amen? That's right. But when you're not really hooked up to it, I mean, you'll do it, but... You know, it's not really what you want to do. It don't take a whole lot of stuff to stop you from doing it. Amen? That's right. Amen? See, cutting grass, I don't like cutting grass. I just don't like it. Amen? I just don't like it. Some people do, and it's, they say it's therapeutic to them. They, they get to see something done when they get through. But I just don't like cutting grass. I don't like weed eating. I don't like doing that. I'm not who I am. I have done it, and... I'm sure I'll do it again, but I just don't like to do it. So you know what? If, if I go to the door and it looks like it's going to rain a little bit, I'm going to hold off a little while. Amen? I'm going to give it an opportunity to rain where I don't have to go out there and do it. Amen? Right. Amen? Right. But uh, you know, when, it, when it comes to working on an automobile, I don't mind doing that. Right. And, you know, it'd be thundering outside. But I'll grab my stuff and go on out there. My wife hollering the whole time. It's fixing to start raining. Well, if it does, I'll come in. That's, right. hey, that's just the difference in things that I don't mind doing versus things I just really don't want to do. That's right. hey, man, you understand? All of us have got that, right? right. Amen? Amen? You know, it, it gets too cold outside to do a lot of things, don't it? But don't get too cold outside for me to go hunting. You know why? Because I like to go hunting. Right? Used to, <clears throat> excuse me, used to, when it would rain, I'd go hunt. I wouldn't do nothing else, but I'd go hunting. You know what? I don't do that no more. I got smarter, amen? Right. Amazing how as we get older, we get smarter, don't we? Right. Or we should get smarter anyway. My point to all this is we make time for everything else. Right? We need to make sure we're making time for this word. Amen? And the Lord's been showing me this week, just because our Bible's not in front of us, don't mean our Bible is not in front of us. Did you catch that? 
Just because you're not looking at the Word don't mean you're not looking at the Word. We all got enough of this Word on the inside of us to move forward. Amen? Amen? And you know what happens when you start quote Rather than just seeing this Word, you know what happens when you start saying this Word? When you start speaking this Word? Faith comes. You start believing. Amen? Yeah, I, I'll be watching some ministers on TV and, and they'll be speaking. And I'll start saying what they say. You know why? Easier for me to grab hold of it. Easier for me to remember what was said if I say it. Amen? Right? It's how much involvement do we want to put with the Word of God. How involved do we really want to be? Right? Or how much time do we want to give to this world? And this world will take every minute of every day from you if you'll give it to you. Amen? If you just say, here, here it is, take it. <clears> There's <throat> just so much to do. Amen? Is there anybody around here? Anybody? That you just sit at home and you don't have nothing to do? Anybody? No, it don't work that way, does it? Is anybody around here, you have to struggle to figure out what you're going to do with, do, how you're going to spend your time. You have to struggle with that. There's so much going on. How many people like that? Every one of us, ain't we? I would say that would be a common problem for all of us then. Amen? Start making the Word of God a part of your everyday life, no matter what. Amen? I don't care if you're at the doctor's office. I don't care if you're at the hospital. You can move forward in this word as long as you're still above this side of the ground. Amen? That's right. That's right. Amen? So we ought to be trying to move forward in this word. Yeah. Right? Because I firmly believe the ones that are not moving forward are falling backwards. Amen? What did Jesus say? The ones that are not with me are against me. Amen? He didn't say, now I got a line here that's for me, I got a line that's idle, and then I got a line that's against me. That's not what he said. He said, you either with me, or you against me. Amen? So we're either moving forward, or we're moving backwards. Amen? We're losing ground every day. Right? Well, what's going to change it? What's going to change it? The thing that's changed all of our lives, the Word of God. Amen? Not much of what you see on TV is going to change your life for the good. For the good. There's a lot on that that will change it for the bad. There's a lot on that that will get you in strife. There's a lot on that that will get you aggravated and upset. Amen? But there's not very much on there not very much at all that's going to give you faith, that's going to give you peace, that's going to give you joy, that's going to give you happiness. Amen? Amen? You know, even some of the preachers I see on now, man, some of, and I'm not knocking anybody. I, I, I don't think I'm the only one got it right and they got it wrong, but man, some of the things, you really have to be careful what you watch and what you listen to. Amen? Just because somebody stands up and claims to be a Christian and know the Word of God, don't make it so, folks. That's right. Amen? Amen? That's right. You hear a message, you need to get in this Word and find out for yourself. Amen? When I'm up here on Sunday morning and I say whatever I say, I expect you to go behind me. Amen? I expect you to challenge me and say, now I don't see it that way. Amen? I thank the Lord for Miss Cheryl. She's... She'll speak up. If she, if she don't see it that way, she'll say, hey, show this to me. I don't understand this. Amen? That's not, what, that's not the way I see it. Why come you see it this way? Amen? She challenges me. But that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be challenging one another on what we believe. That's right. Amen? Folks, if we don't know why we believe what we believe, what are we going to do? Amen? 
That's why it's so important to spend so much time in this Word. Right? Because if we don't spend time in this Word, all of that space that this Word is supposed to have, something else is taking that space up. Something else is taking that time up. Something else is filling that void up. Amen? Amen? I mean, the world we live in today is a perfect example. Look at it. Look at the world we're living in today. Amen? I hear them talking about with this virus, and I ain't getting into all this, but they're talking about shutting churches back down again. It's one of the main gathering places that so many people go that we need to shut church down. We need to shut church back down again. You know, the country ain't in bad enough shape. We need to shut the church back down. But you know what? We're going to leave the clubs open. We're going to leave the liquor store open. We're going to leave Walmart open. You can go to Walmart. You can go to Sam's and you can go to all these places. Amen. I had a man not, well, it's been a couple of years ago, a year ago. We were talking and I was talking about we need to open the churches back up when everything was closed. Of course, ours was open. Amen. We shut down there for a few weeks, but not long. We come in and got separated. We just moved on with the word. Amen. But I got to talking to this individual and he said, well, you know, we, and I'm not knocking him. If he's listening today, this is the truth. Amen. And I said, I said, you know, have y'all, have y'all started going back to church? No. That stuff's real. I'm not here to tell you this morning it's not real. I'm not here to tell you that at all. Amen. And I was working on his car. And he said, you know, I, I need to be at Sam's. I got something I got to do at Sam's. And then I'm going here and I'm going here. I said, uh, in Columbus? Yeah. And I stopped for a minute. And I said, did, did you really hear what you just said? Did you really hear what you just said? We're talking about a virus that you're afraid is going to kill you. And you're going to go to Sam's. And you're going to go to Walmart. And you're going to go here. And you're going to go here. Oh, but the Lord's going to protect me. Well, I'm sure that He will. But He's going to protect you in all these places. And He's not going to protect you at church. Hello? Let's wake up. Folks, this is a Christian man talking like this. Amen? People have heard this stuff so long, they're being fed fear. The Lord said, fear not. Amen? I'm not here to tell you this morning whether you ought to do this or whether you ought to do that. I'm telling you ought to follow God. You ought to trust the Word of God. Amen? You ought to trust the Word of God. Amen? But you know what? It's hard to trust that Word of God when the only time you get the Word of God is on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. You know what? It's even harder to trust the Word. It's even harder to trust the Lord when they cut that out. Amen? Those three places that you were getting it, now all of a sudden, you don't get it no more. Amen? Now they've taken it all away. Now what? Now what? Now it's time to be fearful, ain't it? I'm not knocking anybody for being afraid. I can tell you right now, if I sat down and I watched all the junk they watching, and I heard everything that they hear, I'd be afraid too. Amen? Right. But I don't do what they do. I don't hear what they listen to. I hear something else. Amen? And I'm not afraid. Amen? Amen? You say you got a big old mouth. I have. But I got a big old God to back it up. Amen? Amen? Folks, 
Either we trust His Word or we don't. Amen? Amen? It's time we made a stand. It's time we stood up in the Word of God. For the Word of God. Amen? And just quit being pushovers. Amen? Amen? I've heard my whole life, and it's the truth. The Word of God is going to do one of two things. It's either going to draw you to it like a magnet, or it's going to push you away from it. One of two. Amen? And it's not up to Him which one it does. It's up to me and you. It's how bad do we want it. Amen? What are we willing to do to get what belongs to us? Amen? Amen? I'm facing some things. I got some things I'm dealing with. And you know what? Sometimes it don't look good. But what does the Word of God say? We just going to grab hold of what it looks like and what everybody else is saying? Or are we going to grab hold of what the Word says? That's right. Amen? You remember in Matthew, he said, For by your words you'll be justified. Right. And by your same words you'll be condemned. It's up to you. Right. You can speak lie and joy and peace, or you can speak death and cursing. You can have either one you want. Up to you. Up to you. Amen? It's not up to the Lord. It's not. Amen? Verse number 6, he said, if, I, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. He said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto me. It shall be done unto you. Amen? Whatever you ask, According to his will, he said, I'll do it. I'll do it. Amen? Wonder why not very many people are getting prayers answered. You reckon it might be that they're not asking according to his will? Possibly because they don't know his will? You know why? Because his will is his word. Amen? So if you don't know His Word, it's impossible for you to know His will. Amen? You may have a generalized understanding. You may think you know. But when the pressure gets on, are you going to be able to stand on what you think you know? When the devil gets in your face and starts talking, what are you going to do now? Are you going to be able to stand on what you think you know? Or do you want some Word right there? Do you want facts to back you up? Amen? Amen? Verse number 8. He said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciple. He said, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Amen? He said, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Amen? Amen? Right? The first trek on the road to loving somebody is the first thing you got to do. you got to love yourself. You've got to love and respect yourself. Amen? Folks, if you walk up and you look in the mirror and you can't love the person you, that is facing you in the mirror or you can't respect the person that's facing you in the mirror, you're never going to be able to love anybody else. Never. Amen? That's what the Lord's trying to tell us. He wants us to spend so much time with Him that we, we become a mirror of Him. Amen? Look at verse number 13. He said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 
no greater love than this that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Think about that for a minute. You know, when we hear this, we automatically start thinking about death. Amen? Amen? I mean, something happened. I, I, I trade my life for my granddaughters and my kids. Any of you in a minute. I, ju I just give my life for you. No, no, no strings, no, no, nothing attached. Wouldn't even have to think about it. Amen? But that's not necessarily what the Lord's talking about. Amen? He's talking about that TV program that we like. Cutting it off. And spending time. That's how you give your life for somebody else. You stand in the gap for them. Amen? When they need comforting, you got the word. Amen? When they need answers, you got the truth. I didn't say you had what they wanted them to, that you had what they wanted to hear. A lot of times the truth is not what we want to hear. Amen? That's right. Amen? Right? But the only way we can possibly help anybody is to be in this Word and be able to help our self. Amen? Amen? If you can't help yourself, you can't help somebody else. If you can't bless yourself, you can't bless somebody else. Amen? If you can't love yourself, you can't love somebody else. If you don't respect yourself, you won't respect somebody else. Amen? And I'm not trying to turn this around this morning and say this is all about a self thing. It's not about a self thing. It's not. It's about a you and God thing. It's about being married to it. It's about where one flesh, one spirit, you know, you were two to start with, now you one. Yeah. Amen? How does that happen? How does that happen? By spending time, amen? That's right. By spending time. One of the worst things you can have is a Christian that don't know the Word of God. Amen? You know how miserable you'll be? You know how miserable you'll be trying to be a Christian not in the Word of God. Amen? Because what happens when the Word comes? Faith comes, right? What happens when the Word and faith comes? Then the devil comes. Amen? It's his job. He shows up to prove to you that that Word's not going to work for you. Amen? And if you don't know that Word, if you don't have enough of that word to stand on, what's going to happen? You're going to stand? Like, if, like Ephesians chapter 6 tells us. When you've done all to stand, when you've done all you can do in the word, and all you know to do is stand, he said just stand. Amen? But you'll only be able to do that if you know what the word says. Right? Verse number 14, he said, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called ye friends, he said, For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Right? He's not calling us servants anymore. He's calling us friends. Friends. What do you do with your friends? You spend time with them, don't you? You associate with them. You talk to them. You love on them. You help them. You do for them. Amen? Well, the Lord said, I'm not your, I'm not your servant. Anymore. I, I'm not, I don't want you to be my servant anymore. I want you to be my friend. Amen? I want you to be my friend. I want you to know what my word says. I want you to know what I'll do. Amen? It said the, the, the servant knows not what the master does. But the friend, on the other hand, we know what the friend's going to do, don't we? The friend's going to be there. The friend is not going to run off and leave you. Amen? 
The Lord saying, I'm not going to run off and leave you. I'm here. Amen? Amen? Now this morning, I really want you to be in prayer. I want you to spend time in this Word. I want you to pay attention to what's going on around you. Amen? Because right now in our life, we're in the spot that's going to determine the rest of our life. Right now. By what we do moving forward. Amen? Know this word, folks. Know it well enough that I can stand on it. Amen? Because I believe we're fixing to get to a point where we're going to have to stand on this word. We're going to stand on this word or we're going to bow. We're going to stand or we're going to bow. We're going to bow to this world or we're going to stand on this word. I believe that. I really do. I love you this morning. I know it wasn't a message like you used to hearing. I, but it's what the Lord gave me. Amen. Amen. This, is, this is what the Lord told me to bring. So this is what I brought. And I believe if you hear, if you hear it, I believe it's for you. I was speaking it, so I believe it's for me. Amen. May be more so for me. I've been hearing it all week. Amen. You just heard it for 35 minutes. I've heard it all week. Amen. Don't quit. Don't give up. Get in this word. Get in this word. Don't get in fear. Amen. Right? Because either you're going to get in this word and move forward, or you're going to get in fear. And you're going to move backwards. Amen. Once again, I love you. I appreciate you being here. I really do. It's an honor and a privilege every time I'm able to get up here in front of you. I don't take you for granted. Amen. I really don't. Thank you. Let's have a closing prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for this opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you right now for each and every one that's here this morning. Lord, for those that are going to be watching. Lord, through the stream, I just thank you right now. Lord, I thank you right now for your word. Lord, just opening it up to each and every one of us, Lord. The more we go at it, Lord, the more we see, the more we want. And I thank you for it right now. Lord, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you this morning. I love you. God bless you. God bless America. Amen. Amen. Thank you.